there are a lot of great podcasts out there. And one of the things that I've been doing is recommending a podcast at the end of each episode. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I guarantee you the podcast I recommend you're going to love. On this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett, I am joined by author Sherry Cook Woosley as my co-host, and we are going to be speaking with Mary Hassler. Mary is the CEO of Harford County Public Library. And did you know that you can be a member, you can carry a card, well, it'd be a digital card for the library and you don't even have to live here. That's true. I didn't know this. And somehow or another on this episode, we're going to be talking about, of course, the library, the new branches, and food. Because Mary and Chef John Shields do a special program together. So we talk about that and, of course, coffee, coffee, and dangerously delicious pies. Never fails every time when it gets close to lunch. Why do I do this to myself and record these things at that time? Oh, God. Enjoy the conversation. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on. You're faster than with me. Guys. Yeah. Oh, man, you already said it. I was going to ask her if she remembered the day. I am sitting here today. I am joined by a, uh, I, I'm going to say a new co-host. I have Sherry Cook Woosley on. She's joining me. And we have somebody on that I've been wanting to talk to for years. And she's very big in Hartford County. Um, and does a lot with the library. I have Mary, ha- well, I guess she better do a lot with the library because she's the CEO. <laughs> I have Mary Hassler on from Hartford County Public Library. And we're going to find out more about the library, everything they have to offer. And for all you listening, just don't think of it as Harford County Public Library. Think about it, all the libraries out there. So whether you're in California, the the library has so much to offer. I think people forget that. Oh, I definitely think people forget that. And I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) It's taken years to make this happen. And and I have to say, I love talking about the library. I always tell people, I have the best job ever. Ever, Mm -hmm. anyway, anywhere. I always wanted to be a librarian, even when I was small and would play with my Barbies in my bedroom, and I would play with my books. Uh, When my sisters, older sisters would go off to St. Dominic's in in Baltimore, I would play with them and and then put them back exactly where they left them, because if not, I'd probably get pummeled when they got home. But I made up little cards in the back of the books. Even before I could actually read, I loved words. I'm not so much into the illustrations. Right. Some librarians love the illustrations. I'm about the words. They, they just resonated with me. So I taught myself to read very early. My mom always read to me. We spent a lot of time in doctor's offices. And I just love what a library does. What the, It opens the world up to so many people. And it just it truly will change your life. And I believe oh, yeah. it. I believe it. Hook, line, and sinker. So when you were going to school, was that your goal to be a librarian? No. Okay. The, the world, I, I'm a child of the 60s, so know the world, uh, intervene. I loved television. Man mm-hmm. from Uncle, my best friend Joellen, we would play Man from Uncle, and we oh were always, God. we would do, we, I loved Honey West. She was another role model of mine. And uh, most people have not seen the Honey West show, but it is on YouTube. So if you want, if you want a little flashback, Bewitched was another show of mine. Uh, I spent a lot of time watching TV, and we had a little black and white TV. So when I wasn't reading, we were watching TV. TV. We did, and I would uh, babysit my my younger sister. Oftentimes, we both my parents worked, and we would watch Mannix. Anybody remember oh Mannix my God, yeah. and the Carol Burnett show? And best I best re- show ever. I'm sorry, they <laughs> oh, don't I make totally shows agree. like Carol Burnett anymore. That was our Saturday night viewing. I, and when I think back, and I've seen some older Mannix shows, I'm like, really? That's what we were watching as kids but whatever it didn't harm <laughs> us we're here but it's all about I love to read yeah. I love numbers too by the way I, I love clocks and numbers but I like to read and it just takes you into a place that you may not you know you may not be able to physically go yeah but you can really experience it so I always wanted to be a librarian but you know the world sometimes doesn't always support what you want to do and I had very practical parents um, my dad worked at Bethlehem Steel 
He was in Get ca- out he was of a here. bean counter, and my mom was a long distance operator with AT and T and C and P telephone. And when she retired after working there for almost fifty years, she was inf- remember information. You could call four one one and <laughs> ask any question you'd like, and they would provide that answer, similar to librarians. And uh, so it, my my mom said, "Learn a skill. If you learn to type, you will always have a job." Mm-hmm. So all my sisters and I know how to type hundred whatever hundred words per minute. And uh, I went into healthcare first. That was my first graduate degree is in healthcare administration. Wow. And I was in the Hopkins system for several years and loved it. And then I had the opportunity to change careers uh, when my children were older. Somebody came to me and said, you love the library. And we were up here. We had moved to Harford right. County by then. And I said, I do. And they said, would you <gasps> like to come to a meeting tonight? It's a friends group meeting. Now, I didn't know what a friends group meeting meant, but they were the friends of the library. And we still have those friends groups. Really? This was the Bel Air branch. And my neighbor said, why don't you come? So I went. And it was one of those meetings. Four people show up, and you all get elected as an officer immediately. I'm like, okay, this seems fun. So we did book sales. We did Snapple sales during the Bel Air Festival of the Arts. And we raised money for that particular library branch. Now, this was pre expansion so this was in the early 90s when it was a smaller smaller uh, footprint and it was just a lot of fun and then I noticed there was a nine hour a week position opened up for the children's department it was every Wednesday night and every Saturday afternoon and I applied for it because I was contractual I was, at that point I was at Baltimore County government right. I was um, director of quality assurance and risk management for their core service agency which is our chronic mental health programs mm. and I provided oversight and coordination for all the programs in Baltimore County and uh, but I had time my kids were getting older and I always loved the library and I loved being a volunteer so I applied for it and <laughs> I'm so sorry but they hired me for it <laughs> and I started the day after Thanksgiving in 1996 in the Beller Children's Department and it was a very different world then right um, I've always been a little bit of a tech I'm a little bit of a nerd and a little bit of a tomboy so I like tech technology i had a cinderella watch on my sixth birthday my mom bought me i loved that watch i had a wood burning set i had do you, anybody remember creepy crawlers oh and God, creeple yes. people i have i still have my sets they're in the basement no at my way. house i have my set. i do not have there's no gobbledygook which is probably like poisonous now in the little <laughs> containers but i have the containers and i would spend hours in my grandfather's basement making things and creating because you had things. a spire grave too I did, but not as much. I got bored okay. with that a little bit. Because remember, that's more art. And well, I, yeah, I love art, true. but it's just, it doesn't come easy to me. But... So wait, I have yes. a question. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So well, I actually have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, but you started with this love of story. Like you yes. talked about how from being a child, you already appreciated the love of story. Um, today, I feel like a lot of our teenagers are so overwhelmed. They've got so much going on that they've lost you know, that idea of let me pick up a book. They don't have time for it. How can we bring back a love of books to teenagers who might be too busy? Well, wow. you know, that's an excellent question. And it, it's got lots of focal points we can start with. First, it starts at the very beginning when they're mm-hmm. young, when they're babies, when they're, uh, you know, when their brains are developing. We know that their brains develop very quickly from birth to about three or four years old, and then it starts to slow down a little bit. But their brains continue to develop through their teenage years. They're not, for, formally, they're not fully formed until their early 20s. So we know that from research. So we use that at the library when we develop our programs. That's why it's so critical we have story times. Mm-hmm. We say, we come to our story times, we've been doing this for gosh 75 years now uh free story times and what they do is those story times develop those critical pre-literacy and literacy skills that you need to love reading the children who don't have that exposure they're always going to be uh and my husband's one of them he did not go to story time Mm -hmm. so library use and reading does not come necessarily easy to him give him a blueprint give him uh directions how to do a xyz by the math excellent but when it comes to reading he's he would never sit down and read an entire book just not his thing so what we do is we make it fun and then by the time they get to middle school because that's where we tend to lose children with reading books in middle school and we make it fun so we have something for everybody not everybody's going to want to read historical fiction not everybody's going to want a mystery not everyone's going to read um science fiction or fantasy but most likely there'll be something there that'll be appealing so that is the key is to find that title that author 
make those connections for the kids and the parents. You need the parents to be yeah. involved in it too. The hardest challenge right now is we're all we're all connected to our devices. Mm-hmm. You know, our mm-hmm. devices, it's real. So we offer them from preschool on at the library, but we also provide educational guidelines. So for a little one, you don't want them sitting on an iPad for hours and hours. It's this <laughs> it's the same philosophy back in our day when you know, they say now you don't want to be sitting in front of the TV. Mm-hmm. Don't plop the child down in front of the TV and turn it on for hours. It's okay for a limited exposure, but you don't want the child sitting there for hours and hours and hours because their brain develops differently. So it's the same thing with the teens. By the time you get in the teens, you offer the variety of things. We know everybody wants to be engaged. Everybody wants to be in part of something. So you just want to keep people actively engaged in what you're doing. And was that part of the philosophy that went into the Darlington Library, this idea of fun? Oh, absolutely. All our, I, I, we're really big in fun, so we like to dress up, too. Mm. Um, fun, <laughs> dress up. But in all our branches, you see different components where um, this is with my construction crew and my project managers. It is not unusual for me to say if we're talking about this room and we're going to develop new carpeting, new whatever, I will say, OK, well, can you talk to the vendor and see if they can do a whimsical fence for us? The first time I said that, my project manager, who's retired now, he's like, whimsical? Is that that's not like a technical term. I said, no, but I'm seeing something whimsical in my mind. Fun. Because it costs the same amount of money to build something that is okay that it does to do something that's a wow factor. Yeah. I am a Disney freak, so I spend a lot of time in Disney and, and watching how they do things. And this has gone back for many years. And bringing them back to the experiences you have at the library. So you'll see Schooner Cove at Haverty Grace. Darlington has a fabulous patio now with the fireplace. It also has a small early early learning center a small teen space um each branch is very special but it really is you want people to walk in no matter where they live in harford county no matter what branch they visit that they walk in and say whether they say it or not but they're like wow this is really cool Mm -hmm. i didn't know the library did xyz or wow the county is really supporting whatever i'm i'm looking for a job and the librarian actually helped me set up my email account, set up my resume, helped me apply because, you know, it, not everyone is fully as wired as we are. And that's what our role is to get people started in whatever path they want to go. That's wonderful. Yeah. You, the one thing you mentioned about the, with the kids and the books, uh-huh. and I, I agree with you 100 percent, start them when they're young. Because I know a lot of like my daughter and she's 21 and a lot of her friends they were constantly reading and they were going to because they could walk to the library here then when the kindles came out that's when i started getting worried they will nowadays her and her friends forget it they don't want a kindle they want the actual book and they will not get rid of it they'll read it over and over again and not get rid of it and which surprises me that's i love that even more but you're seeing a lot of them want to write too which is even better i i love the combination of the writing and the reading and Mm -hmm. you you touched on something really interesting we noticed uh, i've been in this field what 25 26 years now and when i came in the internet was just coming in coming in to yeah. to speed it was the old green screen remember the oh, old God. Uh, you know the bulletin boards and all that uh was there and i believe at that point we had at the Bel Air library one netscape oh computer God. that <laughs> sat in the middle that nobody ever touched i mean you had to sign up for it but nobody ever touched it because it was new and yeah. it was the internet and i always said well this the internet i think is gonna be really cool i discovered early on that i could <laughs> research all about disney and find out things um and i i'm i i always refer to myself as a typical user of the library even though i know the behind the scenes and how or what goes into it i always tell my staff i'm your typical user and i go and visit the branches and use it like a regular customer mm-hmm. would because that's how i figure out what we need to improve or change and the internet to me was just a great way of embracing more information, getting out to people. And then, of course, it became, you know, the Internet's full of ads now. Um, The quality of some of the things, you have to really, you have to really do due diligence if you're looking for credible information. We know that. But it's the same thing with, it's even the same thing with books, with anything else. The quality of what's in the content varies depending on who the source is. And you just have to do your, your, um, due diligence before you believe everything you read or see or hear Mm -hmm. and we know that um 
So when ebooks came out in our country, we really embraced them quickly. Yeah. And everybody said immediately, no more print books, you know, no more print books. And if you go out to Europe, if you travel to Europe, you'll see that there are bookstores everywhere yes. still. Great bookstores, incredible bookstores. They took a different tactic. They looked at it as more as the e-content's great. Like when I travel, I will download a couple books to mm-hmm. my iPad. Uh, because I, you know, it used to be I would take a whole duffel bag to Florida when we would go down for our week, and then leave them in the laundry room for other people to read. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I, well, actually, I do probably pack two or three books to take with me too, real books. Um, but the e products are really great because you yeah. can sit on the plane and read and reread. And I think what you're seeing now is we are all we're all trying to break up with our with our devices. We have books at the library called How to Break Up with Your Cell Phone or Your Smartphone. I've read it three times. It It doesn't it hasn't really helped too much, but I'm trying (laughs) Uh, because as my husband says, I live on my phone. It's uh, it's like attached to my hand, and I'm not the only one. I don't think in the world. So I think, but I think our younger generation they've discovered that earlier. Remember, they're on. We're all on technology all the time at yeah. work, at school. So when you come home, you want to de de let's see de escalate the stressors of the day. The best way to do it is pick up a physical book and start reading it because your brain works differently reading on the screen versus reading the print. In a book. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. And if you want to relax before going to sleep at night, read a book. Yes. It, you have to read a couple of pages, and I guarantee it, you will fall right asleep, especially if you're my age. But um, <laughs> where the device is not so much. So it's a good mix. And yeah. embrace. I always tell folks when they get upset about the different technologies, I said, well, well keep, keep in mind, it's a, what's important is access to content. Access to whatever's on that page or on the screen mm-hmm. for everybody. That's what makes our country so great is you don't have to pay to play. And, keep, and all, I always tell folks that. But it doesn't matter what the device comes on because, let's face it, we don't have papyrus rolls in the library right now. We don't have, what was it, those ginormous laser discs? Oh, my God. Remember yeah. them? The size of a record. Yeah. We don't have beta tapes anymore. Oh, or, God. Or, or I, I don't know, even the reel-to-reel. We yeah, probably, reel-to-reel I, I, or even cassettes. Yeah, or cassettes. You know, So formats will always change. Technology will always continue yeah. to change. But what's really critical is to make sure we have access to content. And also, um, one of the things I've noticed in the classroom is the attention span. Because it seems our young people don't have the, the attention span. And so you have mm-hmm. to have a very exciting first chapter to get them into that story. And then once they're hooked, you know, maybe they'll continue. But, for example, in my classroom, they have to write a literary paper. And so they had to get a book. But I encouraged them. I said, listen to this on audio. So follow along in your book so you're annotating That's actually as annoying. you're listening. Yeah. Because that way it gives them something to do while they're listening. But it's also allowing different input. Yeah. So I'm definitely looking for ways to incorporate technology as a way to say, okay, what is working best for each individual student in terms of getting to that story. That is absolutely true. Uh, we, when, we, when we have our students come in and look for either a book to read, we always offer it in the, all the different formats we have. We have a lot of streaming now, too. Our e-products are, we've had offered e-products for about 20 years now. So we have the wow. e-books, e-movies, e-films, e-audiobooks. About anything that can be an e-product is, is available free through the library. And we always say we have that available. And the really nice thing in Harford County uh, not with the private schools yet, but we are exploring that possibility. Is, and if you're in a Hartford County Public School, any of the schools, weekly we receive your student ID. We have an agreement with the schools. We launched it about a year and a half ago. Your student ID can be used with any of our electronic virtual products. Oh. Immediate access. So, And that is updated on a weekly basis, so that's always current. So no matter where you travel in the world, and actually this goes for anyone because we do have virtual library cards that anyone can apply for, you have access to our complete online library anytime, anywhere for free. So we always encourage, we work with a lot of educators and explain that to them. Um, and I, we talked to the school superintendent, super school superintendent, Sean Bolson. I saw him the other night at a meeting. We were talking about that. I said, Hey, you know, are your, all your administrators and educators, if you have student ideas, send them to us, put them in the database because then you can access the databases and we have classes you can do online and get certification for. So yeah, it, the world is there. It's just accessing it. And for our students, the YA books, YA is young adult level, mm-hmm. that's our high school books. Those books are, tend to be a little bit shorter in length than the adult books, but they tend to be focusing on the characters, 
the excitement and the plot. So I recommend adults to read them too, especially if you're like me. I have a very short attention span these days. Seems to get shorter every year. (laughs) And the YA books are incredibly written. And you have a lot of the um, very high high level authors who are writing the YA and teen books now. Uh, Another thing is graphic novels are very popular for all ages. We have them at the library. Graphic novels are not what you're thinking they are. Graphic novels are novels that are have illustrations. Think uh, some people refer to them as, as as glorified comic books. We do not because I think they're a little bit they're a higher level than comic yeah. books. And there's nothing wrong with comic books. We like comic books too. I still have my Archie comic books in the basement somewhere. Um, but uh, graphic novels are another way to. It's just the key is finding out what that child or that teen or that adult likes and what is what appeals to them. Right, and I think when you're talking about sparking the imagination yeah. earlier, that's yeah. that same idea. It is. Um, and then one of the so my home library is Bel Air, um, and one of the things I love is when you go and check out at the bottom of the receipt, <laughs> it says this is how much you saved. And oh, I, I, yes, yeah, it will tell you oh, yeah. how much money you saved by using the library's yeah. resources, and it's and it's accum- it accumulates. Yeah. So if you really? get a library card yes. today, it might say you saved thirty five dollars, but a year from now, it might say you saved. Fifteen hundred dollars. Mine is like forty thousand dollars now because I my <laughs> library card is pretty old right now. And it's so fun. And it is, and it's real value. I mean, it's it, it's based on real um, data and, uh, because we know from our our Polaris is our ILS, which is our library system. Think of the old catalog, but it's all electronic. It it knows the value of that item you're checking out. And Rich, you were talking about writing, how important it is? Yeah. Okay, so we have special collections at the library that we've added over the years. We have the American Girl doll collection, oh, which God. is amazing. We just added three new, three or four new dolls. We have the superhero action figure collection. You know, I think Spider, all the versions of Spider-Man and Batman and Captain America and things. Those go out in backpacks are really cute, and they have in them the books, of course, that accompany the characters. But they also have a writing journal which is a simple notebook. And we ask the child to write their story down, the adventures that they have with Captain America That's or awesome. or um, Felicity or That's whoever fantastic. they're... Yeah. Then it comes back, and our staff reviews it before we put it back out and make sure it's okay. Um, not to edit it or anything, but just to make sure there's nothing bad in it. Sure. And then uh, the notebook goes, journal goes back out with the doll and the books for the next child to continue the story and the adventures oh. of Batman or whoever. Right. And, it, and it really is, it's, it's kind of what we were talking about putting together literacy, reading, writing, mm-hmm. and all those skill buildings in a fun way. Because we know kids, even adults, we learn by fun and by having fun and making it exciting for everyone. And that's just one way we do it where they're learning, but they may not realize they're actually developing and fine-tuning their skills. But and I, that's just, okay. I love that idea, you know, because we talk about reader response theory. And the idea is that if you and I read the same book, we aren't actually reading the same story. Because we are each individually right. bringing our experience and our understanding to the text. And so I just think it would be fascinating to read through what each of your, you know, your little patrons have written in their storybooks. So I think that's I a love fantastic that. Yeah. idea. I feel bad now, though, because I didn't know about the savings. And I use Hoopla more than anything. We love for the Hoopla. Li- I know, but I feel bad because <laughs> well, when Wait. I go to the library, it's usually to pick up the box of glasses for the Lions Club. Oh, we do that, too. Oh, I yeah. know you do. <laughs> we do that, too. But are you very rare? I, I can't tell you the last time I checked out a book. It's okay. Because it takes did. me too long to read. <laughs> if you're using Hoopla and you're using it through the library, that still okay. counts. All, All right. our electronic databases. It does. And I, I'll talk to Hoopla. And ask them, hey, the rich man, make sure you show him his savings. But you know, it's, it's funny, people have a very traditional view that uh-huh. I'm not a library user because I haven't been in a library branch in I don't know how many years. What? And I'm like, okay, well, do you use ebooks? Oh, yeah, yeah, I use your overdrive product. <laughs> Okay, well, you're a library user then. Or they come to our gala each year. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's using our library. That's okay. You're aware of what we're doing, and that's what's important because, you know, there's folks who, who will never use library products, and that's okay. It's everyone else. The, I, I think our borrower, our borrower percentage is about 80, 80, 88 to 92% residents in right. Harford County have an active Harford County Public Library card, whether it's virtual or not. I mean, we have a huge support network. <laughs> um, and that, well, the virtual one's really good. If you can't remember yours, um, 
you can go online and, and, and apply. It's a really simple online. So if you if I put in Mary Hassler and my real information, it may say you're already in the in in. Oh my gosh, he's I, got his M Power card mine all the time. <gasps> Even though, and I always make sure I renew it every time I get it in the mail. I always renew it, even though I don't go. Well, you want to see an antique? Wait a minute, I will show you my library card. I have my original library card from back in. That's why I had to get the nineties. I I think. (laughs) And this is our old logo, which is similar to our new logo. And we used to have to do our signature in hot pink. My staff have tried for years to get me to to get a new card, but I won't because I have my barcode memorized. Well, I have my barcode memorized, and I don't want to have to memorize a new barcode. Sorry, I memorize that barcode. Oh well, after twenty six years, or or, no, I've had this prior to that, so this is probably. I, don't, I would have to ask my staff, probably 30, maybe 35 years don't old. Don't tell me you also can We've memorize been here since, your driver's this license This has been number. since 1986. I've been here since 1986, so I probably got this library card in the late 80s. Okay. And that's how old it is. No, my driver's li- my husband, though, no. if you ask him any number, he, 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 he he's like, I always refer to him as Rain Man, because he, <laughs> he's like amazing. He'll remember all those numbers perfectly, his driver's license, and our account numbers, not me. No, I, mm. I don't even remember my phone number half the time. Okay, well, you both anyway. just reached into your respective wallets and purses to produce the <laughs> physical card. Of course. Let the record show that I also have a card, but it is at home in my library tote bag, which we use to carry our books very so nice it is properly organized it's uh, just not in my wallet you just had to outdo That's, me didn't uh, you? <laughs> well and if you walk in no oh, rich just won't apply to you since you don't walk in but hey if anybody I do walk, walk in i do the well, me- i go to the meetings and okay. i like you guys do like a lego thing there a lot. oh the lego thing, and i yeah. just i love going in there and looking at what the kids do too <laughs> me too i just don't Checkout. Well, well, that's okay. We have new checkout, self checkout machines. We have a, we have one in every branch, but they're new, uh, brand new. And what's really interesting is you don't even need your physical library card anymore to use them, which is really nice. The technology mm-hmm. keeps improving, and as soon as the technology improves, we add it. We we test things. We're always piloting something at Hartford County Public Library. So right now, you mentioned Darlington earlier. We're testing or piloting two new things up there. One is twenty four seven self pickup lockers outdoor huh? locker system so when the branch is closed you can you can pick up your items so we're testing that oh, wow. and then we also have a tablet station and the tablet station we know I, I, I know my my dad's not would not be happy with that but you know newspapers aren't being printed in in physical formats anymore or a lot of magazines so we have a we have a few left that we can get but we also have the tablet station so when you go to the branch you can just borrow it sit there and read the wall street journal new york times whatever on the tablet now so we're testing that too and if we like it we get good feedback we'll expand it to the other branches how does that work because some of these magazines and even newspapers will only allow you to read a little bit, then they want you to sure. pay. Oh, we so, pay a lot. We uh, pay okay. a whole lot. You actually lot. pay for the subscription Oh, absolutely, we have okay. to. We spend um, our materials budget, that would fall under materials budget, is our th- our uh, second largest expense for the wow. library system. Our, more, our first expense is always our, our staffing, yeah. you know, and benefits, because we're a service industry. Um, the other the other part is our materials budget, and we spend a lot of money on on magazines and periodical and books yeah. and all those things so no we can't um no most vendors won't give it to us for free you know the nice part though during lockdown i don't know if anybody's a genealogist here you know we have ancestry and all that yeah. um and you know we pay a lot to have it available in the library and um a few of them are offline and then they made it free when we were all locked down that was probably the best perk being locked down <laughs> unfortunately i never took advantage of it but i know other people did so that's the first time i because everybody in my family did the dna part yep. except for me so during lockdown is when i finally did it i did dna interesting i did it for myself and my mom my dad had already passed but when it came mm-hmm. out and it was really interesting um i'm i'm scandinavian finland uh span iberian peninsula a little bit of africa my mom is like 92 percent british and a smattering of other things so it, i keep telling my sisters i surprise we're not german like we thought you know that's what we all thought for years we're all much <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fun to do and then they it all is. said oh great now we're all going to get arrested i'm like okay well as long as you didn't do anything bad you won't get arrested <laughs> The only thing that scares me about it, or the one thing I do love, is shared. Apparently, I'm more Irish than my wife, so I do love that part. Um, but the only thing, it's you know, because you can, 
it'll show you the matches and everything. Apparently, I got a ton of cousins that I didn't know about. Yeah, and it's interesting where they're from. I have I a just, lot of them from here. That scares oh, me. Oh, that's that is interesting. Yeah. Mine have been mostly in. I have a uh, France, England, of course. Oh, I got uh, a lot Australia. Of England, yeah. Um, it's been interesting where they're all coming from. Yeah, I, I haven't reached Finland. out to any of them because I'm. It's like uh, I don't know. If this is really true or what? Uh, yeah, because when my uncle passed, all of a sudden we're finding out that he had. Kids that we don't oh, know about. Yeah, but I did not the, have that. But back in the day, yeah. that's, yeah, it, actually two of my uncles. <laughs> but you know what's really interesting is my parents were born in uh, the 20s, mm-hmm. the 1920s, not this 20s. And uh, <laughs> I have to always correct that because I'm like, I would say the previous of the previous century. And, um, you know, the, back then they really didn't talk about family no. history when you would ask it just they didn't mm-hmm. you know it wasn't something that it, it, oh nobody cares about that or whatever so i think with the whole interest in genealogy and the dna testing that has really enabled family members to really learn more about their families we have four pro- uh, three or four programs coming up this winter on gene- we do a lot of genealogy yeah. classes and bring in experts who can help you you know you have your dna results now what or, um, you know, different topics. There's so. a lot of classes you guys do at the libraries, we which do. are amazing. We have over 150,000 people who attend our programs, even this past year, during when we were coming off of mm-hmm. a COVID and things. Um, we have thousands of programs and events every year, and they're very well attended. And we quickly moved to virtual. So now we're in between virtual and in person. Yeah. We're doing some in person when it, when it works, and then we're still doing some virtually, and then some of them are hybrid. It's, there's components of yeah. both. So, um, yeah, it's really like we have the, our fairy tale um, and superhero festival is returning this year. Well, on 23, on January 20th. And we are moving it to the Abingdon Library because the Bel Air Library is getting ready to close down for extensive renovations. And that will probably be out, offline for about 12 to 18 months. And we want people to get used to it not being open Uh, so we're moving it to abingdon and that's a fun-filled day we invite celebrities throughout the county to come and do a reading do we we never have outside groups do story time for us because that's under state law uh, we can't use volunteers to replace our work it's in the code really yeah under maryland public library laws so we do our own story times because that's that's something we train and and is part of what we do if we did nothing else we would lend out books and do story times and um but once a year we do by invitation only we invite certain folks to come and read a book their favorite book or we always we ask them do you want help in selecting a book and we'll send them to ahead of time because they they get really nervous sometimes and then um, they read the book and we start early in the morning and go all day and it's a great event and we do dress up Wonder Woman may make another appearance Wonder Woman's got to dust that costume <laughs> off of her figure out how to hide the 20 COVID pounds but just don't let uh, Joel or wear yeah. the Spider-Man costume oh my gosh oh that was great so you know and it's a fun filled day and yeah. in the first year we did it many years ago we called it the fairy tale festival and then i said but, but let's have superheroes that would be fun so everybody we do loves superheroes and they all the little ones come dressed up they're so cute so that is coming up and it is it's free so um, january 20th right friday january 20th yeah let's take a little break so i can talk about our sponsor freedom federal credit union Somebody asked me a while ago about opening up a business account. They had just started a business, and I told them to check out Freedom Federal Credit Union. Of course, they weren't sure if their business qualified because it's just them. It's a sole proprietorship. Well, guess what? Sole proprietor, LLC, corporation, partnership, nonprofit, organization, club, or even an unincorporated association, you can apply for a business account with Freedom Federal Credit Union. If you're located in Harford or Baltimore County, you're eligible for membership with Freedom. And it's very simple to open up an account. All you need is your employee identification number, a mailing and physical address of the business, and a personal identification for each signer. And guess what? Here's the best part. Guess how much it takes to open up an account? One dollar. That's right. You can start a business account with only $1 at Freedom Federal Credit Union. I've been with different banks and credit unions. This is definitely the best financial institution I've ever been a member of, and I love it. Just go to freedomfcu.org. Again, that's freedomfcu.org. 
Look for a branch near you. Go sign up whether you want your personal account or business account or both. It's definitely the place to go to. And they are federally insured by the NCUA. And trust me when I tell you this, it'll be the best decision you ever made. So uh, you mentioned celebrities coming in to do some readings. Are you allowed to say who any of them are? Oh my gosh! Well, we've had Cal Ripken, of course. He was okay. he was a big celebrity a few years ago when he came out with his children's book, and and I a big shout out to him and his team because they helped us really learn how to manage a high profile celebrity. Um, really? We've always had big authors and things like that, but he took us to that next. Oh, he, his team is amazing, right? And you know he's got fans and he's mm-hmm. got uh, folks who follow him around and. Um, totally professional so we learned a lot so we have incorporated all the things we learned when we hosted him in our big event so we had just had jennifer weiner we uh had to move that off to uh, um bell camp over to water's edge right. uh, we can hold about 300 people at the abingdon library we now it's just renovated that, we you? did right before That's covid right before okay. rock- lockdown and everything's on wheels and we have that beautiful window mm. overlooking the uh fountain, fountain. and yes. the boardwalk so we can when we have chairs we we can accommodate about two three hundred people comfortably. Wow! Um, but we got even more registered. We, I think we had like six hundred and fifty people who signed up, and we're like, well, oh, that's a little crowded for us. So we moved it off to uh, our great partner, Water's Edge, and held it over there. So um, we're working on our women's summit. We are bringing that back this year. We did we did several of them during uh, before COVID hit, mm-hmm. and uh, we're bringing that back. So we're we're working on a very special theme, but I don't want to give too much information yet. <laughs> (laughs) And a very special New York Times author coming. We're going to make it fun this year. I think people need need to relax and have some fun so uh, we try to do a mix of you know serious things with fun things and just get you out and about because we know there's still folks who are reluctant to go out and about. Um, We also know that um, you know people want to feel that they're important and valued right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah the, the, the Abingdon Library I, I mean, it was, have you ever been it, to the gala? No. When we transform, oh my but how gosh. many people did you have go this we year? We had about six hundred and fifty. Wow. Um, now we had two galas this year. It was a uh, you know, COVID has changed things. We yeah. we had in April the twenty twenty gala that had to get canceled, okay. so we had that in April, and uh, we had about. 500 people who attended it was nice it was more quiet it was the first one out of the gate so it was a little bit more quieter than normal um and uh but it was nice it was very nice and then we had our regular one the first saturday in november and we had about 650 people we netted about fifty thousand. so we're not quite back to where we were pre pandemic in terms of um funds uh, revenue that hard to get tickets like i remember i went one year pre-covid yes but it's hard to get tickets it is and you know but it's a fun event so we're already planning next year's gala it's a good party it really is a party we uh many many years ago when i became library director we had we had been doing this will be our 19th one this year coming up and um we you know, it was always a very nice event, very quiet, nice event. And when I became a director, I said, well, can we can we kind of up it a little bit? I would like it to be the party that the tickets sell out in minutes yeah. that people just talk about all year. Right. They can't yeah. wait and make it cool and fun. And uh, the, my foundation director at that time totally understood and made it happen. So it's it's been a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work. It takes, I had a lot of my friends uh, posting pictures, and I was like, man, I wish I could have made that. It looks so like, fun. It's like... It really is a fun night. And this year, this time we had some game. We had video arcades. We did a little retro. We did video arcades and we introduced uh, a 3D magic mirror. When you've seen it where you you take the picture and you get it immediately. And um, we did that this year. And then we also did uh, the magic mirror where you touch. It's this beautiful little mirror and you touch it. It takes your picture for you. It's, you know, all those little clever touches. We're always trying to keep it fresh for people. And the food was amazing. Just amazing. And of course, our sponsors are fabulous who, who work with it because they make all the difference and yeah. enable us to do really cool things. Who was it that catered that for you guys? We had several caterers. Okay. It was different. It, was, it was a, wasn't just one caterer oh, this okay. year. So it was a little bit different. Um, and that was uh, right now in the restaurant industry, it's it's really tough with yeah. the cost. Um, you know, food, as you all know, when you shop, food is very expensive now. And um, so we did a little bit different. And it turned out really great. And Cynthia Hurd Hagenhan was our coordinator for it. She uh, does a lot of event planning mm-hmm. in the, throughout the county. So, See, I'm saving on food. I told my wife and daughter, I said, look, 
you know, if everything's going up too much, if the cows can be grass-fed, we're going to be grass-fed. It doesn't cost us anything. Just go out front and eat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My daughter's going to be like, Dad, I told you no dad jokes. Yeah, the, there's yeah. probably a book in the library about how to, you know, cut down. <laughs> how to live off the dog. grass. Yeah, I bet there, the if not, we should probably <laughs> create one. <laughs> God. We talked about the Darlington Library, right? We did. Okay, the Aberdeen Library. Aber- Aberdeen Library is fun. We, we, during COVID, we refreshed that branch. It had, when you would walk into it, if anybody used it, uh, it, was, it had the feel of the 1970s. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we just transformed that entire branch, and we added, on the children's side of the building, an outdoor story garden. An idea I stole from Brooklyn, oh, New York. Like when I was up there with my grandkids, uh, we used the library quite a bit up there, and I just love their outdoor outdoor story garden so we have heaters so we can do if it's not too cold we can do outdoor events there it has a whimsical garden and a whimsical garden gate and uh, it's just a really and we took an a, a space that was had a dead tree in it and it was windows there and we actually added a door where the windows were and and put a special flooring in the outdoor garden and the and bg e green grant helped pay for it so thank you bg e green grant I thought you were going to tell me you you somehow or another brought that dead tree back to life. Yeah, no. Okay. That dead tree, I think, is... I have no idea where that dead tree is. Nope, nope. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, and, that, and then we changed... Um, you know the floor plan too right and, and it was interesting in that in that particular branch it was built um in late 70s 80s and it had this weird floor bulkhead that's why i refer to it i don't know what the term would be but if you think of bulkhead that goes around the ceiling yeah. this was on the floor and we had been told for years oh can't touch that that's the mechanical equipment and the air handling we're like okay so we started to meet i'm like you know if we could get that out and put floor whatever the floor um grates would be to bring the air up i said that would give us a nice square footage that mm-hmm. we could put things you put against the wall. And I said, oh, you can't touch it, Mary. It's got the equipment in it. I'm like, hmm. I walked over to it, and I had my facilities guy, Mark, and I said, Mark, pull that grate up. I want to see for myself what's in there. <laughs> he pulled up. There was nothing in there. There was It was empty. They had, What they had done is put this, built this bulkhead around the floor, the whole perimeter, and the grates – they extended the grates with like a weird elbow. Yeah. So they were coming out of the top of it. So it looked like the air handling system was in this bulkhead, but it was nothing there. So I said, okay. So they're gone. They're gone. Oh, they wow. are in the history archives of Harford County Public Library or the bulkheads on the floor in Aberdeen. So, you know, it's just funny how things, you assume things, but you, you that's just a lesson. You know, always ask questions and do your own research. Yeah. You'd yeah. never know. I'm yeah. drawing a blank. Where is the Aberdeen Library? It's right across from Town Hall, right across from Festival Park. It's a great location. So it's by the, by the Senior Center, right? Yes, it okay. is. Like where yeah. the, okay. the train station. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. All right. Now I know where Because I used to go to the Senior Center all the time. Okay. Not when I was a senior. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. Is that another really dad joke? <laughs> dad no, joke. No, yeah, because remember, with Open Doors Career Center, correct. I ran the Generations Online program, right? Okay, which is teaching seniors how to use. Yes, I remember the, that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I would always go there to yep. check on my peer coaches. Yep, yep. Um, and yeah, and my sister always yelled at me, "Why are you staying at these places so long?" Because I love talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta get work done. It's like okay. So the Aberdeen Library is great. It's yeah. really nice for the and we have a facilities master plan that's on our website uh, where it goes out for ten years and it kind of gives us guidance on projects that we're doing. We try to refresh our branches every couple of year and and a refresh is generally like painting and carpeting and and maybe new furniture and things like that. Um, major projects like the Bel Air Library will be is about twenty five million dollars and that will wow. be, that will take about a year year and a half to complete. That's two levels. Uh, it's like two almost three levels it has the first floor where you come in below grade you go up to the first level which we used to refer to as the mezzanine level Mm -hmm. and then you go up to the third level where the adult is Uh, both those elevators have been going down and not functioning properly i mean they're they're pretty old now so um the county is fast tracking replacing them so we'll have to close a little bit earlier in the spring to be closed for about 10 8 to 10 weeks for that um because we the building's not accessible ADA accessible if we don't have elevators. Plus, we also can't yeah. move the collection from upstairs to downstairs at all, or vice versa, because there's no elevators. It's all stairs. So, right. um, we'll be working on that this spring. Yeah, speaking of collection, yes. Is, and 
I've been meaning to ask you this. The libraries, do they have like a section for local authors? We do. You do? Okay. We do. Sometimes they're interfiled. It depends on the local author. Um, like uh, I'll use Chris Chismer, Richard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's like, you know, so he's, he's interfiled with, you know, the, uh, the regular collection. Yeah. Um, but we do have local author collections, too. We have some self-published things that people right. publish. Um, we do have those collections in all the branches, too. Because that's one of the things that surprised me ever since I started this is how many You'd be sh- you'd be are. shocked. I, 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 I am mean, shocked. Uh, you or would be shocked <laughs> of how many people write. And we used to offer on our website where you could almost publish your own book through a product. Oh, really? We do, but nobody ever used it. I think they discovered Amazon does it <laughs> yeah. better. So uh, we dropped that product because it did cost us money, and we just people were just weren't using it. Um, but uh, we have a lot of self publishing uh, ebooks. Interesting enough, publishers make. I mean, authors make more money when they're published in an ebook format than mm-hmm. when they're a print format, which is really interesting in the industry. Um, yeah, yeah, because I think with when they do it by ebook, it, they get paid by pages read. I, I'm not I sure think. how it I works. Can't remember. I, I don't either, it's but weird. I've heard that from my local it authors. Dep- yeah, so it depends if you are um, if you enroll your book in the KDP system on Amazon, then you can get paid by pages read. Or if you publish wide, then it's, you know, by how many people buy the ebook. Okay. okay. So okay. it depends which program you enter in as the author. Okay. That's another thing I've learned since getting authors on here. So many different things like oh, traditional yeah. publishing, self publishing, yeah. all, all the, the, the audible, audible, audible audio book? books. Audio, audio books. books. Yeah. yeah. Um, audible is the Amazon product, but you that's have to right. pay. Okay. Um, it, it, it's just. It's so much it is that goes so much. into it. Yeah. And gave me more love for local authors, too, and authors in general. They work hard. Oh, they, yeah. And it's hard to get published through the traditional route. It just really is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So, reading programs. Reading programs. You do, is it two a year or, or is it oh, actual we, four? We do actually several different levels. Uh, oh, we okay. have 1,000 books by kindergarten. That's for our preschoolers. They read 1,000 books or they have 1,000 books read to them and we celebrate with them. That's, oh, that's been neat. ongoing. Then we have our traditional summer reading challenge or summer reading program that kicks off generally in early June, goes through August. We bring in a host of events and activities, kickoff programs. It's sponsored. We have sponsorships for that and uh, we encourage the children to read to talk about the books come in and do their activities some of our educators get very involved with it too sometimes it gets very competitive we used to give out summer <laughs> reading trophies um, against my better judgment and it was great <laughs> until I discovered that some of the teachers were calling each other and stacking the decks I'm like yeah we're done um, what yes you kept oh being very goodness. competitive it's hard for candy we all want to win <laughs> and, 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 and and my rule was when we when we bought the trophies um, you know my staff brought in these very classy looking trophies and I took one look at them. I'm like no no that's going to get lost in that trophy case at the school. I want the biggest, gaudiest trophy we can afford. Because trophies are very inexpensive that, I'm sorry, will outrank the football trophy, the baseball trophy, the track trophy. And they looked at me and they said, are you serious? I said, oh, absolutely. I want this thing bigger than, than, but, uh, than the Super Bowl trophy. Exactly. I want the biggest trophy. So that's what they did. So they so, gave her a giant cup. Giant trophy. Had our library blue colors on it. And, uh, you you know the schools would get that but we sunsetted that during covid because it was just became way too competitive right. and i'm like okay we're losing focus here you know it, right. it you know and i because i don't want the kids i don't want the kids to get caught up because they some of the school librarians were calling homes and yeah. saying can your child read more books i'm like okay no wow. no no i love the encouragement of reading but i don't want it to become a thing so right. we don't do trophies anymore <laughs> but we do do a recognition all the all the children who complete it their names get sent to the schools so the schools can do recognition for mm-hmm. them um, it's a lot of fun and then we have uh, during the winter we do something we started this many years ago called our winter reading program this is just for adults and just for high school teens okay. and it is something we launched many years ago um, because a lot of our adults wanted to do summer reading and we do include adults now <laughs> but it, the whole focus was supposed to be for kids and we didn't want to lose sight of that so we did something special for the adults and this year's theme is you are what you read it's a it's a it, we're doing different activities each month so in january we're focusing on health and wellness you know just health emotional wellness all mm-hmm. those yeah. things 
And then in February, we're doing a passport. So you pick up your passport. And if you visit these, if you take a yoga class, you, you know, you eat healthy today or whatever the activities are and get it stamped and turn it in. You get a fabulous tote bag and they're really nice this year. And then, of course, if you participate in a program and read your three books, you get a beautiful red mug. It's really cool. I have mine early. I should so have brought it so I could. <laughs> oh, a- audiobooks absolutely okay, count. Good. Oh, oh yeah, audiobooks count. Um, yeah, absolutely. Good because that's a, I. I love to listen to a book when I'm when I'm sitting down working. That's perfect. Or when I go to bed. Okay. Because I I don't like I don't read I can't read the tablet I just can't it's I have hard. to have a physical book too yeah. I like the physical book it relaxes yeah. my brain yeah and you know just it just does and will and will unfortunately put me right to sleep too but that helps that's why I do it yeah <laughs> me too and I think we kick off um, I think the winter reading program kicks off December twenty first so and it's all in good. March right in March early March okay another thing I haven't covered. Um, because you do a lot of book signings, too, don't you? We do I mean, a lot you of... don't sign them. But no, I, mean... I do not sign any books yet. <laughs> I mean, you get a lot of authors in. For, we do. For, okay. We do. And we plan. We try to plan in advance. We work with some of the agents mm-hmm. in the country. That's how we receive Jennifer Weiner. Um, and we look to see what's popular, what's out there. Sometimes it's limited, depending on the author. And uh, we just do a negotiation with them. Sometimes they come because it's part of a tour. Um, and so we work on that. And it's a lot of fun. And, when they, and they run the gamut between children's authors uh sometimes we focus on the illustrator if it's somebody particular um well known and sometimes it's you know our jennifer weiners of the world yeah Bef- before we get into the chesapeake farm i just i wanted to check with sherry to see sure. if you had any more questions i want to save chesapeake farm for last if i talk about it and then we talk You're about something afterwards. I'm already getting hungry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, and I'm, I know uh, that's going to make I'm me extremely hungry. I, if you talk about food, I get hungry. Oh. It's, it must be just I, something in our genes. So, yeah, I would like to just okay. bring up one more thing before sure. we talk about food because I, <laughs> I am also getting hungry. Um, just that I know that you, we kind of skated over the fact that librarians are such an amazing resource. Yes. And um, I really think that we should talk about that a okay. little more. Because one of the things I know that in education we're trying to do is the scaffolding. So, for example, for YA, we're trying to pair books that have similar themes. Mm. So we did, in my class, we did Kindred by Octavia Butler because it's accessible, because it was written in a way that we can understand and we can identify with the author because she goes back Mm. in time to experience. Mm. After that, we read the narrative of Frederick Douglass because it's the same themes, Ooh. the language is more difficult okay. for students to like to sure. get through, right? He's very rhetorically beautiful. But, you know, by going and talking to librarians, we can get this information of, hey, listen, this is the text I'm, I need to teach. Can you help me pair it with something that's more modern? Um, and then again, maybe there are things that you know about that I don't even. like. So what would you say, what questions can we bring to librarians you know, to to get some of this this wonderful knowledge. Well, you you you, that's very astute. What you were what you were talking about, and uh, what's very helpful for us is uh, we have school liaisons throughout the county. So we have a librarian who's assigned to every school. They uh, tend it tends to work very incredibly well at the elementary level. Mm-hmm. Um, they work very closely with your school librarian um, on staff, and they talk about you know homework assistance themes that are working on projects that are coming down, the more information we have at the branch level, the better we can select materials, have things ready. Um, it's, it's gotten a little bit easier with, the, with everything online because we have so much information online. But when you're building your scaffolding and you're building your, your curriculum for the year, you are welcome to talk to any librarian on staff, um, whichever is closest to your school or whichever one you're most comfortable with, and explain to them what you're doing. They will walk you through all our resources that we have that might help you make that connection. And a lot of it is online, of course, which you can do you know, when you're homework school uh, but they are they love those kind of questions and to be honest with you we don't get a lot of those reference I would refer to that as a true reference type mm-hmm. question okay. we truly do not get a lot of that as much as we used to in the olden days 10 years ago um, because you know things are online right. um, we've also done collaborations with the college the library and with the schools to do professional development days 
for educators. And if you're a new teacher in Harford County Public Schools, you will probably see us at orientation because we talk about uh, board books for picture books for older readers. Mm -hmm. We talk about reluctant readers. We Mm -hmm. talk about our teens. Um, It's a full day training that we participate in, Um, you know, because we're educators too. We just come from a different perspective, you know, than our teachers do. Um, But we're here to support. Wonderful. And we have a great staff. I always say, you know, whenever I get along with the other directors in the country, because I do do a lot of um, ALA representation national, but I always say I have the best staff in Hartford County Public Library. Um, we are known for being innovative, creative, and also excellent customer service. We do go yeah. for that. We want you to walk out and say, wow, wow they were really helpful or wow, they were able to really help me get set up in what I was doing. You have a great staff. Yeah, you do. And of course I only deal with Joppa town, but oh. I think it's Pam, Pam, Pam yeah. down there. And even the volunteers um, are so great, even though I don't check out books and they're going to get on me. About it's that. okay. Right. Like, you need to start I feel you need to practice. <laughs> well, well, what are some of your hobbies? Oh, I love reading. I read all the time, but I have a tendency to to buy books. Shame on you. You should go to the library first, check it out, and then buy it if you really like it. Well, right now, my wife told me I cannot buy any more books until I read all the ones that all these authors I've had on my shows. I know. My husband gives me the same directive. He said, "Uh, before you buy any, bring any more books home. Can you kindly take these back to the library?" Or she's like, "You need to hurry up and get some bookshelves put up." I, I know. Um, but well, actually, as an author, I would just like to say thank you to both of you for buying <laughs> books and having well, those stacks of books to read. Well, you know, sometimes we, we go to war with the publishers, especially on e-books, and I'm sure you've read the news on that. Um, no. You know, e- well, e-book <laughs> – Publishers who produce ebooks don't want to sell to public libraries. And for the same ebook that I, as Mary Hassler, private citizen, can order on Amazon for like twelve, fifteen dollars, right. will call cost us at the public library probably one hundred and fifty dollars, if Whoa. not more. We will have limits on it. We'll be able to loan it out maybe ten times. It's it's an interesting world we're in. Wow. So we we there's been there's been legislation passed. There's been attempted uh, passes. There's been lawsuits. It's been all over the place, and it's been going on for about ten years. They really would like us not to be involved in it um, because they feel that we take away from their revenue they're making now our philosophy is that it that's not true because if Mm -hmm. you add up all the things that we still purchase from because remember bookstores have disappeared on us so who's the last great big group I mean, I forget how many libraries we have in the country, but it's quite substantial. Mm -hmm. When we buy, they're happy to sell us their backlist items, you know, physical. And I said, guys, add up the money that the revenue you're getting from public libraries. And realistically, I can't buy Richard Chismar. I can't buy 3,000 copies of that so that everybody in Harford County has it. You know, we have to have a hold list. Um, realistic me, my budget wouldn't support that. So it's the same thing with ebooks. But what you do is you buy a couple copies. And mm-hmm. I always tell people, I said, it's holidays. You're looking for gifts. Look to see if we have it at the library. Check it out. Read it. If cookbooks, I do. I give people cookbooks a lot for gifts. My kids, and I'll look at it first because, you know, if it's a twenty five dollar book, I don't want to hate to say this waste my money on that book. If it's right. only has one recipe, I think that Sammy's right, going right. to make. Um, but I always say, check it out here. If you like it, it's great. Go and buy a couple copies and give them as yeah. gifts because you know you can say I loved this book or I love these recipes. And for authors, that's what they need. They need that support, um, you know. And that's why we keep working with publishers on. So it's fine if you buy things. I mean, I trust me. I have a lot of books I buy. I have I have a whole library upstairs. It's my exercise room too. But <laughs> and it's currently where I'm wrapping all the presents room too. But yeah. um, but it's you know it's lined with books that I have bought over yeah. the years and it's not unusual for me i'm like your your child who rereads their things oh, i do the same thing i will i will oh, oh i've I done think that oh, yeah i love that books yeah. i've reread and yeah. reread yeah yeah i could do that yeah. actually i can do that like mitch Albom's books i yes. can just reread over yep. and what i've done with his because the, the first one that really hit me was tuesdays with maury oh I read that, and then I, I would buy more copies and, and yep. give them to people. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because it's such a great 
It is. A great book. It is. Uh, the Secret was the other one. Yeah. Uh, and you talk about local authors. I love I love historical fiction or I love only any of the state of Maryland, Virginia, mm-hmm. these this the type of authors and their yeah. books. I'm always buying them. I when I go down to the beach during the summer uh, for work or, or whatever, I like to stop by the Bethany Beach bookstore. Mm-hmm. If you've been there, it's a really it's it's an it's an independent bookstore. They're great. They have signed copies, they have lots of uh, events, and they did our, our book sales for the Jennifer Weiner because I we couldn't find anybody local who would sell books for us who would come to our event so I reached out to them um, and I said would you would you be willing to do it and they came and they said they sold more books at our event than they have ever sold any events it was totally worth their time and to me that that's how yeah. we all work together right, that's community um, but yeah so and I'm a speed reader so I tend to read the you first read the Evelyn Woods no, I did it. I taught myself. I don't know how I taught it. In third grade, I taught myself how to speed read. And it must have been something somewhere probably I was touched by Evelyn Woods at some point. Right. And um, so it's the first time I read through something, it's it's quick. It's really quick. And then I go back and we'll reread it. And then I'll say, oh, somehow I missed that. I just did that on an email. I say, oh, somehow I missed. They didn't want me to tell anybody about this until the obituary shows up. Okay. <laughs> Better not say anything. Because I responded, oh, I'm so sorry. Wow. We'll make sure the foundation knows so they can send thank you. Uh, not thank you cards, but, you know, condolences. Yeah. Right. And then I reread it this morning. I'm like, oh. Oh, 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 and we'll wait until it becomes more publicly known before we send wow. it out. You know, because I'm a speed reader. I yeah. don't. I saw the basic, but I didn't. You know, I have to go back. Right. Wow. <laughs> All right, now the scary part. What's the scary part, honey? Talking about food. <laughs> oh my God, I love food. I love to eat. So, Chesapeake Farm and Bay to Table. Yes. With, with John Shields. Yes. You guys started that during COVID, right? Or we did. That's now, what I thought. Now, John has been a partner with Harford County Public Library for years and years and years. In fact, he was at the grand opening of the Bel Air Library in 1997. I didn't realize oh, that. Oh, yeah. He was a celebrity author then under the previous 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 director and of course I didn't know him, uh, yeah. you know, uh, but he was there. So, over years he's done in-person events. We and we've had a lot of chefs, um, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, you know, especially if they write a book, we try to make that connection. So uh, during lockdown, we I was trying, you know, we, we switched to virtual very quickly. Yeah. But I kept saying, you know, people are struggling right now. You know, it's it's there's a lot of depression, a lot of mental uh, mm-hmm. issues going. I mean, it was a tough time. Still is a tough time. Yeah. How do we keep people engaged with what we're doing? And um, we had had a couple uh, local chefs on. And we t- I said, well, the cooking shows kind of work. You know, if you get the recipes out ahead of time so you know the format was there and we had John do one and I was sitting there thinking he's he's got a, he's very good on camera he's I mean he's a professional yeah. and we connect because of the Baltimore connection mm-hmm. you know we grew up a few streets from each other we share some of the same experiences um, which are a whole different t- show we can do sometime <laughs> um, with our family and uh, you know I, I reached out to him and of course keep in mind restaurants were struggling they weren't oh, open God, yeah. uh, you know it's just, it was a nightmare for everybody and I said, John, would you be interested in maybe doing a series with us? And I kind of laid it out, and he said yes. And he talked about he started his foundation. He's working with um, – his foundation is um, – oh, it just went out of my brain. It will come to me probably before I'm finished. It was um, our common table. Our common table. Okay. And it was – he started that to help provide support for – teens, young adults who would be interested to get go into cooking, to be a chef, restaurant, that type of thing, and providing scholarships. So it, that's been, and he was just getting off the ground when, when we reached out. So we came up with this cooking series, um, Chesapeake uh, Farm and Bay to Table, and launched it. And the first time we did it totally live, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, John's very mm-hmm. funny. We, we film it down in his condo in Baltimore. He's down by Gertrude's, his restaurant. And uh, we it's it's been really interesting. We've gone through several film crews now. I mean, it's a real <laughs> production, and, you know, and it's funny. We... We get along really well. We bounce each other. We, we balance each other. And because we share our Baltimore background, um, it's very natural, I think, on screen and very genuine. Because right. I am not a natural performer. I'm not a actress by any stretch of imagination. And I cook, but I am not a chef by any stretch. Right. And um, I like to bake. I'm a be- much better baker. So it's been, it's been a really great learning experience for me watching a, a master chef do these recipes so we started off with doing various themes and the whole point of our show 
go back to Darlington. The Darlington Library is an agricultural themed branch oh. because it's right next to the Ag Center in Harford County okay. and the Grove. And we know we have a huge ag business up mm-hmm. here, and we wanted to support it, and we were trying to figure a way to support it. So as part of our cooking show, we talk about visit your local farm markets, li- visit your farmers. Kate Dallin was our first celebrity on the show from Bloom's Broom who talked about her family farm, and we just expanded, and, and we are regional. So it's not just focused on Harford County, even though – we always touch on Hartford County. Right. It is throughout the state of Maryland. And yeah, we you have, guys just did Ocean City. Not we did ago. do Ocean yeah. City. That was fun. We did the State Fair. We've done uh, Southern Maryland. We did the Oyster Fest, right. down, which I didn't even know existed. <laughs> Go Rotary Club of yeah. Southern Maryland. <laughs> they put it together, and that was amazing. Uh, I was fascinated by that. If you have not gone to the Oyster Fest, Oyster Festival in St. Mary's County, put it on your schedule for next year. It is a lot of fun. Even if you're in Hartford County, you can do it in a day and uh it's amazing it's just fascinating well, we do one here in the county now too we do, and that's right in Howardy Grace. Grace so go yeah. to Howardy Grace too yeah. and you know it's supporting amazing how many different recipes there are you could that you can make with oysters exactly and I love oysters <laughs> oh, I yeah. love oysters so um it, I was like in oyster heaven um <laughs> so it, and it's just it, it's supporting all the and we support the wineries the breweries the mm-hmm. uh there's a spice guys down at we go to the 32nd street farmers market down in Baltimore down by Old Memorial Stadium. Uh, we've been there several times to do filming. And it really is that holistic approach yeah. about it started out how do we keep people engaged? And we knew people were doing crafts. I have baskets of knitting that somehow I thought was important to do during COVID. I haven't touched since then, but it's there <laughs> when I retire. And uh and eating, food. Food is food is comfort. Food is is really comfort, and um, we have a real fan base, and we've gone international. We were viewed in Ireland, so yeah, go huh? figure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know when you do things virtually, it's it's it. People can log in from anywhere. We archive all the shows on the library website, so you can go back and view them at any time. Right. Um, we did have to postpone our December uh, sweet treats one because we all got sick, um, and we said, yeah, this is not going to work. So we will be redoing that probably in January. And we did a Kraut Fest episode last yes. year. That was a lot of fun because Gertrude's Restaurant has an annual Kraut Fest. Um, we were unable because of COVID to go and do the filming at Gertrude's mm-hmm. like we had planned. But we had the food. So, And if you've ever had um, John Shields, it's the chocolate sauerkraut cake is to die for. That was one of the recipes Chocolate we made. Sauerkraut. Yes. Um, um, hmm. Oh, I know oh, it doesn't that. sound right, but Sounds it was good awesome. To me. <laughs> um, <laughs> recipes are on our website. So okay. when you register for our program, because we have to send you a Zoom link because of privacy and security. Oh, it's on Zoom? I can find oh, yeah, it on Zoom. YouTube. Oh, it is, it's archived on YouTube, okay. but the, okay. live sh- the live shows live on are Zoom. on Zoom. Um, and because of cybersecurity, we have to make sure you register so that uh, we okay. don't have people come in and do bad things when exactly. we're on camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we used to film the shows live, but that got to be challenging uh, yeah. when you're cooking and, and doing all that live. So now we record, we do B-roll filming. Um, I know what that term means now. B-roll filming, and then we, um, our video production crew puts that together into nice segments, and then we do the actual cooking part where the celebrity comes and we all film together. And then we do, we air that as one show, and then we have a live Q&A session after that. So it's been, it keeps morphing. It keeps changing. Oh, the, the videos are great. I, it's fun, and it's fun. Yeah. If I sit there and laugh, I know it's a good show. There's only one show <laughs> Sorry, I didn't if you laugh. Love to cook, you gotta watch. Yeah. Well, so I actually, I do not love to cook, but my daughter, who's 14, does. Like, she's an amazing okay. baker. So if you ever do anything with teenagers or you need like Absolutely. a guest star, she would love to. <laughs> I will keep to, that in mind. Um, she makes the cakes and she watches all the shows. Like mm-hmm. I. I'm just like I love you know, cooking. I'm like, Me too. I like, I'm like eating. Here's your chicken <laughs> breast, and here's your vegetable, and here's your starch. Here's dinner. But like, my daughter is amazing. Oh. With the show, yes. Has has Kelly from Harford TV contacted you about putting it on there? I've talked to Kelly about it. Um, okay. We haven't we haven't followed up because you know things take longer right. these days. But we also talked. They actually have a kitchen up at the studio, and I, and I had approached her. Gosh, maybe about a year and a half ago. Because okay. I, 
<laughs> the way that my brain works, I think really big first, and then we I go reach for the stars, and then yeah. we winnow it down to whatever reality will be, usually based on budgets and things. So when we first started talking, I said, well, you know, we could take – now, keep in mind, this was at the beginning of the pandemic when we mm-hmm. were all locked down, and nobody was going anywhere. And I said, well, you know, maybe we could take one of our meeting rooms and turn it into a test kitchen. <laughs> You know, just rebuild. You know, that was my idea. And we all talked about it, and John was on board. I'm like, you know, we could build a real kitchen set. It would be more of a kitchen set. Right. Not a, I didn't want to do a teaching kitchen because then you get into the health department. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wanted more of the TV set kitchen right. um and we talked about doing that Haverty grace actually we talked about turning that into and something we could wheel in and wheel out and be flexible and then that kind of died because i'm like yeah that's not reality we need those meeting rooms once we reopen again we need them for other things so then we i talked to kelly about um we did training together up at chesapeake therapeutic riding oh. i guess about a year year and a half ago was some type of leadership and she was there and they were getting ready to announce their new name mm-hmm and I said, oh, this is perfect timing. And I explained to her what we were doing. Now, this was early on. Um, we just need to get, connect back again. Yeah. But And what I'd like to do is uh, possibly even expand it. Uh, you know, um, there's a lot of possibilities with it. And, you know, we just have to make sure we have our film crews because that's been our biggest challenge is keeping our film crews because right. it is a production. And it takes a lot. It, it looks like it's just John and I on camera with a, you know, camera it's in front of us. how many people behind the uh, scenes. You'd be surprised. I have a right. sous chef V from the Gertrude's who's usually, it's great. Those shows are great because he can read my mind and I can read his right. mind. Sometimes you'll see him on camera. If it's something really heavy and hot on the stove, I'm a little leery about picking that up. Yeah. Um, so I'll say, come on. Come and get that off. <laughs> uh, you know, one time we melted something on the stove and all the everything started going off. I'm like, well, that's a problem. So John has put me in charge of working his stove now. Um, because he's got a it's a it's a glass top, but it's a nice one. It's not yeah. like mine that I have at home that has like two buttons. This has like a whole bunch of buttons and a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, we always joke about let's not burn down. And then one time his wire whisk he gave me to whisk something totally fell apart. I said, I feel like I'm at home. This is what my mom's house was like, you know. He doesn't want you touching anything oh, he, anymore, does he? You know, he's the sweetest and dearest man, and, you know, we just have so much fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah. God. So I we'll be it. back. Oh, oh, I know. Uh, uh, so, okay, who was my timekeeper here? Um, so we'll be back in production. We're just finishing up season three. Season three, and we'll start season four. We're in pre-production for that. It's hard to believe it's been that that many already. I, I agree. And the Ocean City trip was fabulous. That was so much yeah. fun. It looked like you guys had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. And, John, when we did it at the Alaska stand, uh, because we tried, I tried to select folks who have been around for a while, mm-hmm. some of the places, and we were looking for an ice cream shop. And I said, you know, I think the Alaska stand, who we used to terrorize in the 70s, <laughs> if anybody remembers at all. I said, oh, my gosh, that was at 9th Street. Um, and uh, they have ice cream. They have really good ice cream. And John got it all over his face. We sent him back to the restroom twice to clean it off. And it was pretty funny. He came out. It was, I said, John, you got to go back in. You still have it all over. Because it was well, melting as we're filming. Right <laughs> you know, I'm standing there. If you watch the episode, it's a cute episode. I'm standing there holding all this ice cream. I'm like, it was hot that day. And it's melting faster than John's <laughs> talking. I'm like, you know. But, you know, it's just. And I like some of the bloopers. We should have done a blooper reel, but we have not. Um, but And the people I've met um, that John has introduced us to statewide. It's just been really. Yeah. There's so many entrepreneurs out there. Um, Gigi's Chocolate. We just interviewed them uh, mm. for the episode that will get done eventually. Um or Gingy, not Gigi. And Gingy is amazing, this young lady who started her own chocolate. And they travel all, all over the world for these ingredients. Um, they're at the uh, at uh, Belvedere Square. And, you know, it's just you don't get to meet these folks all the time. Yeah. And, you know, and bringing them back to Hartford County has been amazing. And then we have our local rock stars, Kate Dallum, you know, all the all the folks that we've um, had on the show. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing just in Harvard County alone how many uh, great people there are. I and agree. But you're talking to people everywhere, too. And okay. Have you got Rodney Henry on there yet? I have not. I'll oh, have to look to into that. Danger- dangerously Delicious Pies. Oh, aren't they carried over at Coffee Coffee? Yes. I believe Coffee yes, Coffee they has are. them. Yes. Okay. Yes, they are. I love that connection. Yeah. Because Coffee Coffee, they're, Hillary and her mom are oh, really they good partners. Awesome. They are just incredible people. I, matter of fact, I got to get up there and get some more beans. Yeah, I'm thinking I got to get up there too. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, now I'm hungry, but, Rich. I know. I'm, that's why I saved that for you last. You mentioned the word pie. I love pies. Oh. Yeah. Talk about it, baking. It's not like 
have you ever heard of them dangerously delicious? Dangerously delicious? No, but okay, I, so I it's not like your, over a cake it's not day. like apple pie and Me all too. that. He fills it like with with meats and everything. It's okay. just oh okay. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I also like remember Wilson's Farm. Their pie. Oh, God, yes. Um, yes. and they're still being sold at where their new location, the new yes. name. Yeah. Yes. Um, there are what's it? The fruits of the forest pie. Yes, oh. that okay. is amazing. That it's is amazing. Never, I, I agree. just had it a week ago. Oh, I gotta so get good. one. Now that I think of it, I gotta get up there. They're probably all sold out. Oh, they have great pies. Yes, great pies. And of course, like Roy's to... Orchards. Oh, yes. They're, they're was it the apple cider cinnamon donut? Yes. yes. And mm-hmm. the apple cider... Um, yes. Smoo- or not the smoothie. slushy. The slushy. The, 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 the apple cider float. They have an wait, apple wait, cider float, a float? Too. float? Yes. <gasps> I haven't yes. had it. Oh, yeah, I know it's about good. this. Yes. I see field trips coming in my future. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, is there anything you'd like to add? <laughs> no. I just want to say, like I started... I have the best job in the county. I love what we do. I, I love the mission of public libraries. It's, uh, you know, I think we're critical. I always feel sorry for the folks who don't use, hey, who don't come into public libraries, Rich. I go into them. <laughs> and uh, if you want additional information, go to our website. It's hcplonline.org. We, we are a wealth of information. Call any of the branches. Come and visit us and stay tuned. We have a lot of big plans. We're celebrating. We are celebrating the 250th anniversary That's of Hartford right. County. Yeah. We have some really big plans for that. 250. I'm yeah. old. But isn't that like questionable though if it's really <laughs> 250? But that's okay. Hey, I was there. Yeah. 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 Rich, the Rich had his outfit on. He was marching down Main Street in Bel Air. Yeah, I remember being in Gunpowder Town and that no, never mind. Yeah. Mary, uh-huh. thank you so much. <laughs> Sherry, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great day. You yeah, too. Same to you. I want to thank Sherry for co-hosting, and of course, I want to thank Mary for coming on. Oh my God, I cannot wait to do more with Mary. I know there are so many things we could talk about. We were talking about um, the Buddy Dean show, actually, before we even started recording. And for those of you old enough to remember that, um, there's it's not far from where Mary grew up, where they recorded. And my godmother used to be on that. It's matter of fact, if you ever seen the movie Hairspray, I believe that's what it was made about. But anyway, yeah, hopefully in the future we'll get her back on. Now, as far as a podcast goes, I'm not recommending the podcast this time. Instead, I want to recommend the library's YouTube channel. So make sure you go to that. Of course, it's the Harford County Public Library, and I will have a link for it in the show notes as well. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast or if you would like to recommend somebody for me to get on the podcast or if there's a topic you want me to talk about just go to conversations with rich bennett.com click the be a guest link and fill out the form and i'll get in contact with you and we'll get everything set up and while you're there please subscribe to the podcast as well as the newsletter and check out all my sponsors and of course my co-host Please show your support for all of them as well. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe, and thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. 
I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarhillconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Hill Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 